Howdy, and welcome to the Choose a Happy Day show, a podcast for women who want to up-level their life, manifest those dreams, and just live happier. If you have vision boards, love energy work, are into psychics, and feel you are meant for something more in this life, then this show is for you. Hi, I'm Lorraine Toth, an award-winning filmmaker, author, Reiki master, photographer, and creative genius who also loves to vision board. And I am here to bring you all of the tips and tricks to help you up-level your life. Now let's go and hop on that happy train. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Choose a Happy Day show. Today, I have a very special guest who I've met for the first time today as well. Erin Sakopoulos, is that how I pronounce yes, it? Yes, you got it. Oh, and I found her on Instagram, and I'm so excited to meet you in, per in, like, in person, in real life, IRL. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> so happy to be here. Thank yes. you for asking. Oh, and um, one of my friends, Angelina, um, posted about you, and I was just fascinated after watching your Instagram. So if you can tell everyone what you do, yeah, it's, it's just fascinating. Thank you. So I am a intuitive gemstone energy medicine practitioner and massage therapist. Wow. So in my practice, I practice a specific modality mm -hmm. working with stones. So people are usually more familiar with crystal healing. Yes. This practice is called gemstone energy medicine. Mm -hmm. And I've also studied medical intuition with Tina Zion. And so when people come to see me, I incorporate um, checking in intuitively with their body, with their energy field, bringing through any intuitive information or messages and coupling that with working to shift energy with the gemstones and complementing the energy and intuitive work with body work. I love it. So for people who are listening, who have no idea, you know, like energy work and um, like channeling in, what does that mean? So if they come to you and they're like, Oh, my lower back hurts. Do you channel in and see what kind of messages you get intuitively? Yeah. So, you know, I get like two groups of clients. Either there's clients who are more focused on the energy work and more of kind of like the spiritual growth, or there are the people like you're describing who are coming in with something physical and, um, a lot of the time it's chronic for them and they've kind of been through a lot. So they kind of get to me and they're like, why not slap some gems on it? That's oh, good. I'll try. <laughs> you know, at this point, I'll try any. Uh -huh. um, and so at that point, it just becomes being able to support someone physically, again, with the body work, with the massage therapy work, but also addressing the other side of that, which is the energetic side. Oh. So I, I get people who like to approach their dealing with their body and um, shifting and changing in that way. Love it. So how do you know which gemstone to use on them? It comes through intuitively. Like okay. usually even before they get there, I'm getting messages of what stones to pull out. Wow. And is that from looking at their name or their Instagram? Like, how do you know? I just, I, I noticed that it started happening just as like, as a normal everyday person being like, okay, like what do I got on my schedule today? And thinking about like, all right, well, I'm seeing so-and-so today. Uh -huh. And then it just starts popping up randomly. So I don't actively tune into people because that's a bit unethical from that intuitive perspective. Um, so it's not me actively trying to get the information that's from them. It's just kind of more of what pops up and it feels like whatever their energy wants me to know before. Oh, I love that. And yeah. then when you put the gemstones on them, can they immediately feel it? Most people do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do they feel? A lot of people will say they will feel either like temperature changes. They'll say it feels really warm or it feels really cold. And a lot of them will notice the weight of the gems mm -hmm. and I'll take the gems away and they won't know that I took it away and they'll think that the stone is still sitting on them. <laughs> um, and, um, or people get like a buzzing or like a circling of energy in an area that happens a lot on the brow. Oh, yeah. right here. Kind of yeah. like the third eye. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I love it. All right. Well, so for those of you who are listening and can't see our YouTube, you have how many, like six, seven, eight gemstones here yeah. on the table? 
and I do. all different colors and some are shiny some are not yeah and some are ever on variety yes. i'm so excited for you to talk about those yeah. but before we started i had some questions for you yeah so um i know you like mentioned and i saw this navigating daily life with better ease in mind like your mind body spirit emotions so is there a way that our listeners can tap in and do that on their own I think it's really important to be able to tune into the self. I think mm -hmm. if we can get really good at observing the energy of the self, mm -hmm. we can get a lot of intuitive information that way and getting that intuitive information, I think can really help us okay. um, navigate the world a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And so if they're not as self-aware, maybe like how can they tune in? Do they think like, how is my breathing today? Or like what? messages if i have a migraine is that tuning in i think like i i feel like this brings us almost like right into oh, kind of what i was Yay. wanting to talk about today which if it's okay oh, if we go I there love that. so i mean like the whole thing about the ease of living um it's just something that i've been talking a lot about with my audience especially like this past summer because people will often ask me or like when i work with consultants and stuff like business mm -hmm. consultants they'll be like well what do people get out of what they yeah, and working with you mm -hmm. and um they always want a specific answer like they want like a niche thing and i'm like okay. i was like ultimately it just comes down to ease and living and that mm -hmm. had to make me think like well what's what's the um gain from ease of living and i feel like it's being able to navigate the world around you on a daily basis without feeling like you're on a roller coaster okay. And I really feel passionate about that. That's what my work does. It helps people not have those severe ups and downs mm -hmm. on a daily basis or a monthly basis. And they can go through life with a little bit more even keel. And <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> but I think to get there, it kind of goes back to this little equation that I've been toying with again for the summer with my audience, which is being able to take time in solitude so moments of solitude yes. are what allow us to have great clarity and that's what i think i was getting at with like being able to tune into yourself if you're mm -hmm. able to get to that point of great clarity mm -hmm. within yourself i think that just naturally leads into the knowing yes the intuitiveness of this is how it should go from here okay instead of and then you find yourself i think working with life instead of against life oh, i love that and mm -hmm. it's kind of like you, then you can wear your pen whatever yeah. that is your yeah. yellow road, yeah. right yeah but you need those moments of like solitude so you yeah. can tune in and listen instead of all the chaos yeah. chaos around you is that what it is yeah and then to your question you know what is that you know what are those mom moments of solitude that lead to self-clarity and I, I think that's different for every person. I think that's why people to come, people come to see practitioners like me, mm -hmm. because it is that opportunity to disconnect. That's why that moment of solitude is so important. Moments of solitude to me are opportunities to step back from the world around you that you're constantly engaged in, whether that's your job every day or your kids or caretaking of others. Um, and you get to just be yourself. And in that quiet space is where you can really get to listen and tune in. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so do people, like when they see you, are they tuning in then? And they're like, oh, Erin, like, wow, my head buzzing. Or, yeah. Do they tell you? Yeah, they do. do. A lot of my sessions are kind of long guided meditations. Um, <laughs> I struggled with that for such a long time because I started out with massage therapy and uh -huh. in massage therapy, you really try not to talk to your clients because they yes. are trying to zone out. But when it comes to intuitive work and working with the stones, for me, talking people through that process, and it's not like necessarily talking, like I said, it's a guided meditation almost. I'm expressing to my clients like what I'm feeling in their field, mm -hmm. what I'm feeling happen, what the stones are doing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that helps keep them engaged mm -hmm. and aware of themselves. And they'll often tell me like, you know, I'm becoming aware of this for myself oh. or I'm feeling this. Okay. And I, I think it's really helpful for them. Okay. That, that's amazing. So I already know like people are like, oh, I, they want like hard concrete examples. So can you give an example of someone you've worked with? Obviously no names, but just like they felt this and then they tuned into this. 
Man, put anything? me on the side. No. <laughs> I can think of most recently, I've had a, a particular client who has been with me for, geez, maybe close to over two years now, um, seeing me consistently. And I remember that at the beginning of their journey, they came to me because they were dealing with grief, a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of grief. They had had multiple deaths. Mm -hmm. in their life, uh, very close people within a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And it greatly affected them on a daily basis. And just like I was saying, like experiencing those very highs and lows mm -hmm. and not feeling that even keeledness. Um, so through working together, there were so many things that kind of came to the surface each mm -hmm. session. And with each session and each awareness that they were having about themselves, mm -hmm. it felt like it shifted things within them and then we're just so happy to see the transformation and being able to navigate their life okay. from not such a clouded grief state it's like yes. walking around with like the lenses of grief all the time and yes. that kind of came off and it became easier on anniversaries it became uh -huh. easier on holidays it came easier on you know those death anniversaries, those yes. memories, you know, it was able, she was, they were able to find mm -hmm. more ease with that. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you probably see like differences. Well, since we also do massage, right? Do you feel like the muscles kind of relax a little bit in that area too? And they're not like as knotted up, I would assume, right? Because it's yeah. not tension being held in the body any longer, right? Yeah, exactly. I think um, actually just yesterday I had like a client so the grief client that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So that's an example of a client where um, for them, it just felt best to work just energetically. Mm -hmm. So we don't really do a ton of body work. Body okay. work is always present in my sessions, but uh -huh. sometimes people who are looking for more of that energetic work, mm -hmm. the, the energy work is more forward okay. than the body work. And then there are other people who are really feeling that emotional and physical body state really meshing. So this mm -hmm. can happen a lot when people are really high stress, okay. um, anxiety, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So I recently had a client who was experiencing, like, experiencing a lot of chest tension. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting to see the energy that was going on within the chest mm -hmm. and simultaneously working on the tissues of the chest, working with the fascia, uh -huh. which is that connective tissue covering to our muscles, uh -huh. which got all constricted. So we were able to work on both that energetic and physical oh, aspect. That. So, and that's the heart chakra area, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, yeah. perfect. Well, I'm going to get ready for my next question. Then. Yeah. Uh, so we already talked about the moments of solitude and great right. clarity. Um, you know, manifesting, do you have any tips if they want to manifest or help bring more positive energy into their lives? You know, I guess since it, you can get these intuitive, right? Yeah. Messages. I think from, you know, working with clients for such a long time and when these kinds of messages come in, I think a lot of the time it's about being able to see it for yourself, mm -hmm. being able to imagine, mm -hmm. um, being able to feel like as if it already is. Yes. Kind of thing. Uh -huh. And um, often there will be messages that come in for some people. Um, it helps to draw, it helps to create mm -hmm. art, it helps to journal. Mm -hmm. um, I also love like automatic writing exercises. Wait, where what you, is that? Where like, you, don't, you don't really think about what you're writing and you're not like purposely trying to make nice, neat sentences uh -huh. or anything like that, but you just let the pen go and you might oh, repeat okay. words over and over, you can scribble, that kind of thing. But yeah. I, sometimes that's really helpful for me. Like I'm a very visual person, so I tend to like to imagine things the way they want them to do. Mm -hmm. But my second go-to is kind of that automatic writing. And what yes. I find when I do that is, you know, I might start out and I might just purge, mm -hmm. you know, but then after that, it starts to become a writing of like really intentional, this is what I'm looking to create, or this is what is, or this is what will be. Yes, I mm -hmm. agree. Yeah, I call yeah. that like verbal vomiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're just getting it out there and so it's cathartic, right? Yeah, exactly. When you get it out onto paper, it doesn't have to float around in your head and cause all of this anxiety, right? You yeah, can, like get it down on paper. Yeah. Oh, I love that you like you appreciate that too. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> all right, my next question: um, How to change your energetic step 
point? Like, how can our listeners upgrade their frequency? I think I got to go back to what I said earlier about, I really think it's about being connected to self and mm-hmm. being a student of yourself. Mm-hmm. I think that when we let the influence and expectations of others mm-hmm. rule too much of how we navigate the world, mm-hmm. I think that's what, you know, and I don't love the, you know, like lowering or higher vibrations, but I think it, it constricts our energy. Mm-hmm. And in order to expand and to be fully, I think, into your own energy, I think you really have to know who you are. Yes. I yeah. so believe in it. And then you can be your authentic self, right? Yeah. If you truly know who you are. Yeah. I remember one time having a client that said, I don't know myself to the point that I don't even know what flavor ice cream I like. Like, I just pick whatever um, flavor that someone that I'm with picks. And I was like, that's, that's tough. That's tough. Like, um, and take that and then try to think about navigating the world from that space. How do you navigate? That becomes very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're constantly like sitting on a fence, right? Not making decisions. So was that a case of like, they were so codependent that they couldn't think for themselves or they just never trusted in themselves? Like, what was that? Um, it took me far back because this is a client from a couple of years ago and uh, they didn't stick around as long as my other clients. So I can't quite grasp that memory. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, but people shouldn't be able to like, oh, this is my favorite ice cream flavor. Right. Yeah. I, I do recall that we worked a lot with Blue Lace Agate, which mm-hmm. I do have on the table I here. I to show those. To talk about those, <laughs> yeah. because I don't know anything about that, but it's, it's fascinating to me. Yeah, well, feel so, free to touch with me yes, up or anything you want. I think um, we got all the questions. So yeah. now like, the last thing I wanted to talk about was Jim's toast yeah. and energy. Well, then that's good lead in. So with that particular client, I remember working a lot with Blue Lace Agate mm-hmm. for the reason that Blue Lace Agate has an affinity for clearly defining the self and really getting the you energy to sing the loudest, clearest kind of song within your being. So you feel really connected to it. And that often means organizing energy within so that if we've allowed too much influence from the outside, from our family, from our friends, from outside people, from different philosophies, ideologies, and beliefs it can get very very confusing okay so blue lace agate works to unify the self and kind of push out the foreign energies within your field so you can get really clear on oh this is actually me okay you know this so, is a, this is an, an influence from my parents or mm-hmm. an influence from my friends or my partner or anything like this is me okay so if someone is trying to make it in life choice maybe a new career or yeah. move to another state is that one that you would recommend they hold yeah so uh yes blue lace agate is also one we recommend if you have trouble with decision making and again that boils down to if you're not clear on who you mm-hmm. are it becomes very hard to make a decision mm-hmm. and very hard to navigate your world mm-hmm. when you can't make decisions yes so Maybe someone's listening and they're like, I think that might be me. I don't know. Is that me? Is there a couple like keywords or ways that you would define that kind of a person? They can't make a decision. Yeah. Um, I think that's, you know, when I think about the personality type that may be really supported by Blue Lace Agate, I would say, you know, someone who struggles with boundaries struggles yes. with boundaries, okay. struggles to make a decision for mm-hmm. themselves, struggles to know who they are, struggles with self-esteem, mm-hmm. self-confidence, self-worth, mm-hmm. all those things. Okay. I, yeah. I That brings to mind a certain person, a friend of mine that I have. So now I can visualize and, you know, maybe if she's listening, she's like, oh, <laughs> that's me. But yeah. so she constantly says yes to helping everyone, but to herself and you know, maybe has some self-esteem, you know, issues with the way she looks, like that kind of a thing. Yeah. Okay. So this one would be a good stone. Oh, I love it. All right. So can we show them? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So it's this beautiful light blue, right? Yeah. This light, almost grayish blue, maybe you could call it. Um, Blue lace agate should have this banding in it. 
and I can I want to hold it. Yes, Yay. absolutely. Oh, it's heavy. Yes. It's really cool. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. Look. Yay. So how will they know if we, they get real ones? Are there, you know, counterfeit, just like counterfeit purses? Like, does this happen? Yeah, exactly. Um, one of the reasons why I got involved sp specifically in gemstone energy medicine is that the practice is defined by two things. One, we like to work with the spherical form of stones. That's why everything is in a sphere pretty much or a round, rounded chip. Mm -hmm. Um, just because we believe that that has a really great affinity for working with the human energy field. And so energy from a sphere draws in from its entire surface in towards the center, okay. transmutes it and radiates it back out to the energy field in all directions and cycles. It's doing that constantly. Uh -huh. So we believe that constant cycling mm -hmm. with the stone is shifting and changing over and over again. So it's able to work with you in a really deep way. And then the second aspect of gemstone energy medicine is the quality. Mm -hmm. So we specifically work with really, really high quality stones mm -hmm. so that it's singing the purest note of that stone. So if you work with lower quality stones, they can have inclusions, they can have foreign matter in them. And we believe that when that energy gets pulled in from the outside, it doesn't have a clear path into the center. It bounces around, it can get distorted okay. and it can really dampen and mute the energy of the stones. So okay. That's why I really like to work with some of the highest quality stones on the planet. I've had other gemologists look at these stones and well, say it's like in the top 10% in the wow. whole world market, um, which means they're very expensive. <laughs> yeah. um, and then there's the other side of that in quality, which is it's commonplace in the industry to take a stone and make it look better than what it really is. So you can sell it for more money. So that means heat treatments, dye treatments, lead treatments, radiation, all those things. And we believe that that has a great effect also on the stone's energy. Um, or just completely negates it, like in the yes. case of blue topaz, which is constantly irradiated oh, yes. um, to get a more blue color. Okay. Well, that's more than I ever Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And then there's a lot of just straight fakes, just straight oh, yeah. black. Um, like malachite fake. is a big, yeah. <laughs> malachite <laughs> is a big offender of that. Um, so many times people come into me and they're like, oh, yeah, I have a malachite bracelet and it's clay. It's it's like Malachi. polymer clay that they like band to look like dark black. You can tell because like the banding's not quite right. It's like thick and it looks black instead of dark green. Uh -huh. um, and it's really light. Malachite's heavy. Is Malachite black? Ma no, Malachite is not black. That darker oh. banding is really just a darker green. That's oh. not black. Oh, it's so cool that you know all the things. <laughs> and didn't you say or post about your cat knowing one of them or something? Was it? You know, maybe, or someone else, where the cat was going crazy because it was legit gemstone. It might have been <laughs> no, I don't think it was me. My cat recently was really being a pain in the butt when I was trying to record a meditation. <laughs> That's what I was <laughs> yes. so, yeah. He's voicing his opinion very yeah. loudly. <laughs> so my animals can feel the difference, you know, right? As humans, yes. like fake versus real gemstones, I'm assuming. I think, they, I think they're... I think they're just as sensitive to energy as we are. So, yeah, I love it. All right. So, tell me about um, this one that looks like the train. It's like, blossoms. yes. 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 So, this is citrine. This is genuine citrine. Oh, that's my bristle. Yeah. <laughs> um, and citrine is another hard one because there's just so much out there. First of all, heated amethyst is not citrine, it's two different stones. So, it was a big controversial point in the crystal healing world. And the other thing is, and one of the reasons why I got into gemstone energy medicine was just, I really liked the perspective on a lot of the stones, which can differ a lot from crystal healing. And crystal healing is a wonderful practice, but just with anything that gets really popular, it tends to get really watered down. Yes. So one of the things that really bugs me is that citrine has been deemed the stone of abundance. Mm -hmm. And in gemstone energy medicine, we don't look at it that way. Mm -hmm. We look at it actually as a stone of helping you reach your fullest potential by letting go of all the things that don't serve you. Um, I mean, that can kind of trickle into if you're able to let go of things that you don't serve you, you make room for things coming in and that's a place of abundance. Yes. But people water it down to the point where they think they're going to get rich <laughs> off of 
keeping citrine around them, which most of the time isn't even citrine, it's heat treated amethyst. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I did just buy some citrine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was more for creativity, like bringing in creativity. You know, it was known as the stone yeah. of that. It can because again with letting go of things that don't serve you so it works to unwind rigidity uh -huh. within the energy field and the being so that translates it's a very multi-dimensional stone so it'll do that on multiple levels of our being so it makes sense in terms of the mind letting yes. go of rigidity within the mind which in turn can open yourself up to greater uh creativity nice oh, yeah. i love it yeah. all right so which one of your of these is your favorite does it change Oh, people always ask me that. I don't have a favorite. That's like trying to ask. It's <laughs> a favorite child. But I, my favorite stone is always the right one for the right person at the okay. right moment, you know? And then you're wearing a purple one. I so. am. Actually, I did a little story on Instagram before I oh, came here because I was, I was going back and forth between do I wear amethyst or do I wear sunstone? I typically wear amethyst. I wear it for two reasons. One, it's my main ray stone. Um, in gemstone energy medicine, we also have a concept of there's, you know, the different color rays and the color ray spectrum, and that we're always absorbing all those color rays in, but our energy fields can have an affinity or take in and metabolize one of those rays a little bit easier and more efficiently than others. And for me, that's the purple ray, and we've deemed amethyst the purple ray color carrier. So one of the reasons why I love to wear it, but the other reason is that when you wear Amethyst has a short necklace that affects the throat chakra and can help with clear communication oh. and all that. So I, I Which works for today's yeah. podcast. Right? Yeah, exactly. I think probably on every podcast that I've done, I probably have the more amethyst. <laughs> yeah, but I struggled today. I almost wore sunstone. Sunstone's all about being able to share your radiance and your brilliance. Uh -huh. And so it's going back. I, I'm gonna stick with it with us. I would say you're still sharing your brilliance. Your <laughs> Thank radiance. you. So you choose your necklace. Like I choose my wigs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was like, so well, you came in today. I was like, can I be a brunette or a blonde? <laughs> so we were both having choices. Yes. Exactly. I love it. <laughs> and here we are. They can tune in to see who I chose on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> so uh, what about the purple or the, the pink ones? Because I'm wearing a pink blazer, so I'm like, ooh, it's pink. So this is pink morganite. So I kind of chose stones that also kind of went with that equation that I was talking about moments of solitude mm -hmm. leading to great quality, great clarity and mm -hmm. ease in daily living. And pink morganite is one that we would use for clarity when it comes to emotional energy. Okay. So emotions tend to be complex mm -hmm. and when there's complexity, there tends to be messiness. Mm -hmm. And so pink morganite, really sinks into the emotional body. And I often see the emotional body as like a vast and deep ocean. Mm -hmm. And Big More Organite works to clear up that energetic gunk that's getting in the way of you feeling your true feelings. Like if you're, if you're someone who's dealing with, you have so many emotions at one time and it's hard to really tell how you actually feel. Uh -huh or a lot of other people's emotions are coming into play and that makes it hard for you to know exactly how you feel. Pig Morganite works with that emotional energy to try and really clarify and define uh -huh. what those are emotions are and also kind of discard the excess. So mm -hmm. then it becomes a lot cleaner, a lot clearer, mm -hmm. and you get to know yourself better that way. And in that way, it also is another stone kind of like, um, blue lace agate and helping to connect to the self and bolster a sense of self-love, self-compassion, self-acceptance. Okay. So is it, would someone maybe going through a divorce or something, would they benefit from the pink one? Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah because of the clarity and the emotional gunk and like, right? yeah, I'd like it's a lot to come up. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, okay. Yeah. So what about this yellowish? This one right here? I don't Color would you define that? It's as? actually like a milky white, a um, luminous milky white. Ooh, luminous. It's gotten a little less luminous over the years. Um, this is mother of pearl. Okay. So we use mother of pearl uh, to help with emotional soothing of energy. Ooh. So also in gemstone energy medicine, we 
categorize mother of pearl as the gem of the nervous system, meaning that it has the greatest energetic affinity to that system in the body. So it's a wonderfully calming, mm -hmm. settling stone to the body. And again, it's mother of pearl. So we also kind of say it has like a motherly love or supportiveness. Um, so if it's someone who is lacking in support mm -hmm. and feeling like they need to be having that kind of motherly love, mm -hmm. it's a great one for that. Ooh. All right. So I have a, a, a thought. So since I, you know, kind of, I wrote a book called Psychic Serendipity and I'm all about the love and the soulmates. Say someone wants to bring in and attract their soulmate, which one should they wear? Which one's good for love? <laughs> Oh gosh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a complex question because I don't know that it's so much about love. So I know a lot of people will go and again this speaks to what I was talking about before about watering down the energy of stones. A lot of people would say rose quartz because it's in some circles deemed the love wow. stone. Again, that's not how we think of it in jumps and energy medicine. We think of it more as emotional purification. Okay. Um, so I think for someone looking for a relationship, I think you're more looking for stones that work with yourself. Okay. And again, I think it comes back to knowing yourself and who you are and what you need uh -huh. and to get really super clear. Again, that's one of the beauty, beautiful things about blue lace agate is that it gets you so clear on who you are and what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. It becomes easier when your energy field is moving throughout the world to be seen and perceived by the outside world yes. accurately uh -huh. so that the right person will see you for the right reasons yes without you know, like a the, you know the mask on right yeah yeah, yeah. exactly oh, that's a great way. um and i i think that's more beneficial and i think that's more true and authentic than attracting love uh -huh. you know like you know, yeah you're kind of then manifesting it and bringing yeah. it towards you Right, energy yeah. off. Oh, so good. <laughs> That's a great visual. <laughs> so, if someone wants to work with you, um, do you do remote healing or is it only in person? I do virtual sessions. So, I do gemstone intuitive sessions. And, like I tell people, these stones, their energies, they're on our planet. They yeah. exist whether we have them in person or not. So, it's totally okay to be able, and it totally works, to be able to connect to their consciousness. Yes even if you don't have them on your person. Mm -hmm. And that's how I do it in virtual sessions. I tune into what stones consciousnesses are coming through mm -hmm. for the client. And then we kind of work with them in a meditative state. And again, bring up all that intuitive information, intuitive mm -hmm. guidance. Sometimes virtual sessions can almost be more intense than in-person sessions, mm -hmm. because when people are in person, I tend to focus on, or I have to, give some attention to the physical body yes but in a yes. virtual session you know we're taking the physical body out of the equation and we're just working with pure energy and pure intuitive information ah, so yeah okay so both work i love doing both and supporting clients that way oh yeah. and for anyone who's in the capital district here in new york where can they find you if they want to see you in person exactly so my office is in saratoga springs uh, and I am turnanewleafllc.com if you want to look up the website and see if what I do is for you. Mm -hmm. And then you can also find me on Instagram and TikTok, Turn a New Leaf Intuitive. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. This oh, is so much fun. So fun. I, this is my first time ever learning about gemstones. So <laughs> I'm so excited to book a session with you. Oh, that would uh, be awesome. And I was stalking your Instagram and I saw it was 90 minutes for a new person, right? And then a re Turning client would be 60 minutes. Is that average? Um, I offer both 60 and 90. It's just okay. when I when I have to book people, I have to book that extra time because we have a little bit more paperwork, consultation, yeah. people get lost. So I, I oh, count for that, I count for that extra time. Okay. We're like 30 minutes to see, like, what do you need? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm to stay one more time where they can find you. Uh, Turn a new leaf LLC.com or turn a new leaf intuitive on Instagram on and TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, all right. Thanks, everyone. Yay. Okay. Thanks so much for listening. 
To stay connected to me, please visit my website at chooseahappyday.com. And at the bottom, just sign up for my email list to be notified of any upcoming events, book launches, as well as new podcasts. Until next time, have a happy day.